I discussed some of the highlights of a new paper, a new peer-reviewed paper that just came out called Interacting Tipping Elements Increase the Risk of Climate Domino Effects Under Global Warming. So essentially what this paper does is it considers four of the main tipping points in the climate system. Now there's way more than four, but the ones that it looks at are the Greenland ice sheet collapse, the West Antarctic ice sheet um, collapse, the AMOC, Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, so the ocean currents basically shut down, and it also looks at the Amazon rainforest, the collapse of the Amazon rainforest, or in other words, the loss of the rainforest with the re being replaced with it being replaced by savanna or grasslands, mostly um, those sort of things. So the carbon sink would be greatly reduced. Now, like I said, it doesn't consider a vast plethora of other tipping points. And some of them I'm actually very surprised at that it doesn't include. Like it should treat the Arctic sea ice separately as a huge tipping point. And then that will lead, of course, once we lose the Arctic sea ice, and that will lead to the Greenland ice sheet tipping uh, shortly afterwards, because it'll be the only ice left exposed in the Arctic. And it doesn't consider the, the methane tipping points and other things, but it, it's a good start. Like, I don't want to criticize the paper too much. It's, it's a good start. And one of the interesting things is, so what it did is it looked at these tipping points that I've mentioned, considers a threshold temperature for each one to occur, considers a time scale over which the tipping would evolve on, and it looks at the strength of the connections between the different um, components, those different four components. And it runs a whole bunch of computer simulations um, and it, repeatedly, and then it takes an ensemble or an overall you know, average of them, and it comes up with some surprisingly dire information. Uh, for global warming up to two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial. Now they define pre-industrial, I'm sure it's 1880 to 1910. So again, you know, you need to add 0 0.3 to get it back to relative to 1750. But they found that for global warming up to two degrees Celsius, tipping occurs in 61% of all the simulations. Okay, so it doesn't occur in 39% it occurs in 61%. Now the breakdown of that 61%, of that 61%, and only, uh, here's the breakdown. One individual tipping element was crossed, and I've talked about the four of them, the Greenland ice sheet, Antarctic, West Antarctic ice sheet, um, the AMOC, and the Amazon rainforest. Okay, those are the four elements. So one of those elements tipped 22 in 22% of the overall total number of simulations. Two of them, they were cascading tipping points. In other words, one of them tipped, then leading to a second one to tip in 21% of those simulations. Three of those four elements tipped uh, via cascading in 15% of the simulations, and all four elements tipped in 3% of the total simulation. So if you add that 3%, 15%, 21, and 22, that gives you 61%. So we got a tipping of at least one element in 61% of the cases, and I broke it down for you. So, it, there, there's, um, so that's just at two degrees Celsius, and we're rapidly approaching two degrees Celsius. At one degree Celsius, um, which we've already passed, uh, they argue that Greenland has already tipped. Okay, um, but the others haven't yet. And they also argue that with three degrees Celsius of warming, that the cascading would be less frequent because you would cross the individual temperature threshold of each, of each of those tipping points separately. So they would all start tipping, but it wouldn't be a cascading effect. It would just be an overall temperature effect. They also found that the, the triggering of the, the triggering, the tipping point, the, the initiator tipping was most often the Greenland ice sheet. Um, and the, the mediator, 
the element in between, which when one thing tipped led to other things tipping, was the AMOC because it connects the hemispheres, uh, for example, the northern and southern hemispheres. And the followers was definitely the, the Amazon rainforest. And the West Antarctic ice sheet sometimes was an initiator, but generally it occurred after the Greenland tipping. So, so like I said, it misses a whole bunch of the different tipping elements, but it's a very interesting study. Um, and those are the main conclusions, but I'm going to go over it in, in detail, uh, looking at, you know, what the figures are. In the meantime, um, I often like to talk about some of the books that I've been reading. So this is a book uh, I've just um, not quite finished yet, about a uh, third of the way through, Agent Zigzag. This is a great author, Ben McIntyre. If you like thrillers, um, whether they be fiction or nonfiction, this is a must read. Um, this is a true story. This is a nonfiction. It's a true story about the life of this guy, Eddie Chapman, um, and his exploits as a, as a double agent. And uh, this author has also written a number of books. Their most recently is Agent Sonia, about a Russian, Moscow's most daring wartime spy. And also A Spy Among Friends is about um, Kim Philby. Okay, one of the most successful um, uh, double agents working for the, the wrong side. Um, anyway, he's written a lot of books. I highly recommend it. It's a great, it's a great read. Okay, so let's go to the paper, the highlights of this uh, paper, which is, uh, you know, very, very significant paper. Okay, so basically... I'll go to the first image here. So this is a map here of the world. And they consider the four, four main tipping points. So the dis disintegration of the Greenland ice sheet, the weakening of the AMOC, the dieback of the Amazon rainforest, and the disintegration of the West Antarctic ice sheet. Now, the percentages here you've got dominoes here. The red dominoes are the initiators of the tipping cascade. So Greenland, disintegration of Greenland ice sheet initiates tipping in 65% of the cases. And it occurs um, when something else tips first in 29% of the cases. So something else tips first and then it tips, but it initiates. It's the first thing that tips in 65% of the cases. And it's connected here to the, the weakening of the AMOC. There's a connection here. Um, there is a connection to the West Antarctic ice sheet disintegration here. Um, and there's a connection to the dieback of the Amazon rainforest, but it's not so clear. Okay, so uh, basically, um, as we lose more and more of the Greenland ice sheet, then the fresh water goes into the North Atlantic and that weakens the AMOC. So there's, so there's a destabilizing effect here on the AMOC and then the AMOC can shut down. Now, when the AMOC, um, if the AMOC weakens first, okay, then there's less heat being carried across the Atlantic to the Northern latitudes. So if the AMOC weakens first, that can actually aid to preserve the uh, Greenland ice sheet, not to disintegrate it. Okay, so that could be a stabilizing feedback if that was occurring first. Um, when the AMOC weakened, there's less heat going up to the Arctic. There's more heat at the equator, more heat going south. So that contributes to destabilizing the disintegration of the West Antarctic ice sheet. And if either the West Antarctic ice sheet melts off, that raises sea level, and that can aid the, the disintegration of the Greenland ice sheet. And if the Greenland ice sheet is melting first, that destabilizes, raises sea level, and destabilizes the West Antarctic ice sheet. Um, the weakening of the AMOC, okay, can also affect the uh, West Antarctic ice sheet disintegration. Um, but it's unclear. There's a couple mechanisms where, you know, if the if the Antarctica, um, if an, if the AMOC weakens, okay, there's less heat into the northern hemisphere. Like I said, there's more heat going into the southern hemisphere, and that can increase the disintegration of the Antarctic ice sheet. But that. Um, 
there, there's uh, also some other mechanisms to do with the salinity gradient and advection of fresh water. Okay, so there's some complications that come in here. And then the dieback of the Amazon rainforest, if the AMOC weakens, there is less heat going to the north, there's more heat around the equator, the intertropical convergence zone can shift downwards south, and parts of the Amazon rainforest can go into drought, and other parts can get more rainfall. So it becomes more of a regional effect on the Amazon. Okay, so it's not clear whether it causes the net effect would be dieback or growth. And also, it changes the seasonal nature of the rainfall in the Amazon. So the wet season is less wet, and the dry season is much wetter um, if the AMOC weakens. So there's those connections. So it depends on which connection dominates. So this is an excellent diagram, but we need to do this type of study adding all of the additional feedbacks. And the biggest ones that are missed, of course, that are not discussed in this is the collapse of the Arctic sea ice, which then leads to more disintegration and quicker disintegration of the Greenland ice sheet. So that's a huge one that should be in there. And another one is the methane in the Arctic. And it's not just dieback of the Amazon forest, it's dieback of boreal forests, it's wildfires, it's a dieback of coral reefs. Um, Okay, and there's loads and loads of other feedbacks. Um, you know, the weakening of the AMOC, of course, that's the circulation of ocean overturning circulation. Um, and those currents carry lots of heat from the equator uh, to the poles. About a third of the heat actually that goes to the poles is from the ocean currents, but two thirds is in the atmosphere. So the jet stream weakening and slowing down and become much wavier is a huge feedback adding huge uh, temperature rises to the poles, right? And bringing, you know, where there's the, under the uh, ridge of, under the ridge of the jet stream, you get the hot air moving up, the hot, dry, humid air from the equator moving up right up into the high Arctic. And the trough of the jet stream waves brings cold temperatures much lower. So that, those effects need to be in here too. And also, uh, you know, the, the albedo uh, feedbacks uh, really aren't covered directly. I mean, and they, they need to be covered. Okay, so this, is a, this paper is a good start, but it does miss out a lot of things. So this is the idea that we have a stable baseline regime to start off. This is open source, by the way. Just have a look at this paper. And then we can get a tipping point here uh, to a, a stable uh, regime that is a much warmer uh, warmer temperature. Okay, so so this is the idea of the this is the unstable manifold or the bifurcation sort of thing that occurs uh, when you go to uh, system uh, tipping points. You know, it's it's there's a lot of math. Uh, you can call it a bifurcation or a manifold here, um, and you know you get a critical slowing down of frequencies when you're near the tipping point and so on. You know, there's lots of stuff that is connected with this, but this is the general transition thing here. And you can see, you know, with the model over time, you can see, you know, Greenland is likely to tip first, according to this model, West Antarctica next. And then we have the AMOC and Amazon rainforest much slower. And I disagree. I think the Amazon rainforest is going extremely fast, you know, much, much faster than is, is, is sort of modeled in this paper. And there's ways to model the uh, equation, uh, the equations. I won't get into the math here, um, but there's a there's a there's coupling between the different uh, tipping elements. So I equals one to four. Those are the different tipping elements, and uh, you add a coupling which connects the, the two different tipping elements. Um, okay, those are, so there's the math there. Um, there's there's uh, you know, the tipping elements and the temperature limits considered. So Greenland, we're already there. West Antarctica, we're there, partly there. Um, the AMOC, this is in degrees Celsius. So they say that the AMOC and Amazon won't tip until we reach high, higher temperatures. Again, I take these things with a grain, grain of salt. And this shows global mean surface temperature increase. So at 1.6 degrees, we get tipping of, um, tipping of Greenland. And if the strength of the coupling between the different regimes is higher then you also get tipping of Antarctica here at 1.6 and you even get uh, tipping of 
Um, the AMOC, the AMOC shutting down also. That's if the, if the elements are coupled together tightly. Okay, well, thank you for listening. Have a look at the paper yourself.